Cool. Good afternoon. My name is Frederick Mitchell. I am a developer at Phase 2, and today I'll be talking about EFQ, or Entity Field Query. It's awesome. You should use it. It's awesome, and I'm going to tell you why. All right. So first, a preface before I get into my actual slides. This is a little bit of an advanced session, so I will be going over some code. Um, I will assume that you have written a module or gotten into actual um, behind-the-scenes Drupal. If you do have any questions, feel free, free to stop me. Um, but the idea here is to kind of show you some cool examples of how to do certain things, um, talk about a little bit what my experiences have been within Drupal, um, and why I'm recommending this approach. So like I said, my name is Frederick Mitchell. If you want to follow me on Twitter or whatever, you can too. The only thing that I would suggest is to make sure you go to the right Frederick Mitchell. I'm probably the only Frederick Mitchell that only has one E and no K in his first name. So if you want to follow me, you can do that too. Um, F. Mitchell is my handle on Drupal.org, so if you want to stalk me there as well, you know, that's fine as well. I'm married though, so. All right, so what is Entity Field Query? What is EFQ? Entity Field Query was introduced with Drupal 7, so we're talking about Drupal 7. Um, it's a core class. And by class, I mean PHP class, right? Um, the purpose of PHP classes is to provide the developers a initial framework to extend on, right? That's kind of the point of PHP classes in general. Um, previously in Drupal, a lot of times that was confused a bit with how hooks and alters work, right? So we know that in Drupal, there's an execution method within Bootstrap, right? Core runs, then your modules run, then the theme runs, and then you see the page, okay? And the way that Drupal works, as you know, is it works horizontally. Core runs, then it says, are there any modules that want to adjust what I'm doing? That's what the hooks are, right? Module invoke, all those are hooks. Then it runs those. Then the theme runs. Are there any themes out there that want to man, you know, change what I'm doing? Uses hook themes, and then it actually renders, right? Well, <clears throat> one of the things that was introduced with Drupal 7 is this concept of entity field query, okay? And the purpose was, we all know what nodes are. We all know nodes have fields, right? But there's also other things within Drupal that can have fields, right? Blocks. Ooh, blocks can have fields. I'll show you that later. Taxonomy terms, right? Users, those aren't technically nodes, but they can have fields, right? In Drupal 6, you had to create custom modules to do like your user profile fields and whatever it is. But in Drupal 7, what ended up happening was is that everything was kind of reset to a different building block, right? So in Drupal 6, node was the main building block, and everything was kind of around node, right? Users and taxonomy, etc. When Drupal 7 introduced this idea of entities, Entity is the new building block. A node is a type of entity. A content type is a bundle of a node entity type. Okay, so that's where the translation is. If you've ever looked at the database of Drupal when you add fields, right, you get a lot of different tables, right? Every field gets, gets two tables. So Entity Field Query was created for you to be able to grab nodes, and grab all of the, or actually not just grab nodes, but grab any entity and grab all the fields that can be associated with that entity. Okay, instead of having to go to the node table, then join this table, then join that table, then join this table, right? Because if you wanted to, if a, let's say, and for a good example, if a node had like a headshot field, a title field, a name field, or whatever, right? That's six different tables. If you want to say, I want to create a listing for that information, you'd probably use views. So I'm not talking about views. But from a code standpoint, you'd have to go into each table and then grab those relationships in order to get all of that information together. Any field query solves that for you. Okay? It's a way to query entities and the fields related to them. So this first link um, that's on the slides will 
takes you to um, the original blog post that we wrote when um, I was part of Treehouse Agency. We were merged with Phase 2. That talks about that philosophy that I just said. So that's where that documentation is. So top one, one the first reason, it's in core. So you should use it. It's awesome, right? But just Again, this just kind of talks exactly what I've said, that entities in general are the new base idea within Drupal 7. Okay, And again, the reason was because in Drupal 6, nodes were the king of the mountain. Those were the only things that could get fields really easily. Well, because we want to add fields to other stuff, user field, taxonomy fields, etc., we had to call it something else. And that's where entity is. So this provides you a way to kind of go in all those different directions, whether you're talking about a node entity, a user entity, a taxonomy term entity, right? Those can all still have fields, but you still need a way to kind of connect those fields together in a singular purpose. If you ever used commerce platform, right, you want to build a commerce site, the new Drupal commerce that's in Drupal 7 defines its own entities as well. A product entity, a line item entity, an order entity. So those things can have fields as well, okay? Again, this is a mechanism to go and grab listings of information via code that are entity specific within Drupal 7. Number two, it's very well documented. Okay? So as a developer of Drupal, documentation is everything. Right? It's not enough to kind of go into something and then you figure it out and you don't tell anyone. Right? This is a community driven platform. So documenting how something works is vitally important. Again, the first link is that initial blog post that kind of documents how Entity Field Query works and how it's used. The second one actually takes you to the documentation in the API on Drupal.org that talks about the Entity Field Query class and the different methods that make up the class. Okay? So you have stuff like, <clears throat> I want to grab a list of nodes that are to use a Drupal 6 term, content type article. If I were using Drupal 7, I'd call it bundle article, right? That have this field, so headshot field or title field, equal to this. So maybe field condition is a method that you can add to your queries. So you can get a list of nodes that are of type article with a field value that equals whatever it is. Versus select star from node, right? Enter join whatever table, enter join this field table where such and such. It's just a lot easier. And you'll see the you'll see that syntax um, comparison in a second. Alright, so here's an example of some documentation. And this is taken from the exact Drupal.org API spec sheet. So what you're looking at is a well commented method within the entity field query class. Okay? In this case, the method is called entity order by, right? So if you had to guess what this method does, can someone give me a guess what this method does? Sorting, right? It allows you to add to your query, right, a condition to sort your results by. The entity piece that's add, that tied to that method means that you can order your results that's specific to that entity. So in nodes, right, some things that are specific to the entity of node is title, right? Every node has a title. So you could order by that entity property, right? You could pass in that name to this method and it will order the node entities by that, okay? For commerce, and the orders entity types, right? One of the parts that every order has is an order ID. You could pass that in to entity order by ID. If you're querying order entities using entity field query, okay? Users, what? Every user has a username, right? That's part of the user entity. You could pass that in to this particular method, okay? So it's, it's just, a way to show how to read the documentation, how to use the methods when you're building your queries. And again, I'll show you what the query looks like. 
Number three, it is very simple, especially when you look at what you can compare it to, okay? In Drupal 6, again, anytime we wanted to get a query of information, right, we either used views or we had to write really complex SQL statements, select star from, et cetera, et cetera, all right? Within my particular job function, right, we build enterprise level sites. Right, whitehouse.gov, hopefully you go to the energy.gov um, case study later today. That context of a Drupal site is very different than building a site for a smaller client, okay? Because one, you have multiple developers within there, so you have to think about other people making changes at the same time. You have different types of users. Okay, you may have like a Uber site administrator user, excuse me, that can manipulate and interact with the more advanced functionality like views and blocks and et cetera, those are administration screens, but you may have a subset of users that should only have their particular features for them. One of the benefits of using entity field query is by putting these listings of content and getting things that we need in code, one, it makes it easier for multiple developers to eyeball what's going on and make fixes if they need it. And two, it allows us to build solutions so that we're not actually using the same tools that a site administrator would use, right? So a good example would be if I want to get a listing of content and I build a view to do it and I'm doing something programmatic with that view, then I give that site to my client who also knows views, right? And they build a view for their other offices or their constituents. Now we're competing in the same workspace to do something for that site, right? I have views that the programmer is going to use and I have views that the site administrator is going to use. And then the site administrator sees, oh, I don't know what that view does. Let me see. And then I change it. And then they log a bug. Now I'm trying to correct the view that they changed and then push it back up, right? There's, there's a conflict there. And when you have a giant and big platform Drupal build, a tool like Views, which is good in certain respects, doesn't work in this context. So using code or a class like Entity Field Query works a lot better, and I'll show you why that's the case. So just wanted to set the stage of where we're going, okay? So again, very simple to use. If you want to start a new query, this is, this is the only line you need, right? You're setting the entity field query class and the object that it creates and passing it into the variable called query. Okay? So now you have a new entity field query. You do some stuff, which we'll get into, and then you want to get the results. How do I get the results? I call the execute method. Okay? So I just call the execute method on my query object and I pass that into the variable result. Right? So now I have a result of whatever I did, and that's it. Okay? This is very simple. Reason number four, it's consumable. What does that mean? Again, going back to my example of this platform-specific problem, right? We have multiple developers in, you have different user types, a site administrator, maybe a site builder, maybe a group administrator, whatever it is, okay? You, you need to build solutions that fit that context, okay? Maybe you even have something where someone who's really good at Drupal goes in and builds something awesome, and then they leave. And you're like, oh, crap. How did they do what they did? I have no idea, okay? For some people, having things built in the UI, et cetera, maybe that's one way that they can see what they've done. The problem is, is that because Drupal provides so many different options, those UI panels can be very, very complicated, right? There's all these options, and you got to click this to make this show, et cetera, whatever it is, right? Views is a good example. If you've ever built a view, you know there's, what, like four columns and all these fields and conditions and arguments and relationships and all that stuff, right? So if you want to see what a view did, you probably would have to click through a few times to kind of get an idea of what it's doing, right? Entity field query. I can do exactly what Views does in what you're seeing right here, and I'll show you the comparison, okay? So 
if you're looking at this, you can tell what this query is doing. Entity condition, entity type node, what does that mean? I'm getting nodes, right? Entity condition, bundle of type article. Content type article, right? Property condition, status one. Published. Property order by, created, descending. Exactly. I want article nodes in publish in a descending order. Right? You can read that right here and know exactly what that's doing. Very consumable. The methods are named appropriately, and the values you pass into the methods are very clean. What does that look like on views, doing that exact same thing? This is the query that views creates. Let me preface this a nice asterisk to people who are listening to this online or whatever. I'm not anti-views. <laughs> like I said, I think view serves a great purpose. But there are tools within Drupal 7, and that will be extended in Drupal 8, that are really neat and really cool. So this presentation is just kind of showing you an alternative method. I wanted to call my, my presentation Views is okay, but this is better, but I didn't want to like start a flame war, so. <laughs> All right, so view, this is the same query in a view, what views creates, right? Not that bad, right? You're smart, you can kind of pick this up, you can kind of look at that and know exactly what this is doing. I mean, it adds some other, right, obfuscation in terms of, you know, giving some aliases, the tables, and doing all that other stuff. But this is the view, this is the same exact thing. So let's look at something a little bit more complicated, okay? Any field query, any condition, node, bundle, article, property condition, one, property order by, descending. Now we're gonna add this new thing, field condition. Field, and the column is called field US state, right? Where the value, and the values that are being passed in, right, the array is Minnesota, okay? And I want a range, so between zero and 10, first 10, right? That's what this says. We can all pretty much agree that this is pretty simple to kind of just look at and know what's going on. Let's look at this, what this looks like in views. What does views create to do just this? I added two more lines, right, to my entity field query. What does views do? Right? Because every new field on an entity creates a new table, you have to join the table, right? And so if you were to break this down into a select query, which is what views does, and any field query does do that at some point too, but if you were to write it, this is what it would look like, right? You're interjoining another table, you still have your where conditions, and you're adding another where condition based on that table that you just joined. And you're doing some other stuff there too, okay? And I'm sure you're asking, well, Frederick, I mean, that's not too bad either, okay? But again, in the context of building something over time, right? You may have multiple listings, a block that lists other articles by that author that you're viewing, right? In a page that lists other nodes that are related to that taxonomy term, right? When you start thinking about all the different blocks and all the different pages and all the cool things you can do with listings, you can start to get a sense of how many types and how many number of listings you would have, especially when you have a site that can be very dynamic and can do a lot of cool things. Then six months down the road, you need to go and figure something or troubleshoot whatever that was, right? So now you're trying to troubleshoot something you did six months ago, and you have 10, 15, 20 different queries of different listings, et cetera, okay? Using entity field query saves you time in the future in terms of troubleshooting. It's very easy to see what's happening, okay? And there's some other cool stuff, too, that we'll get to. We're only on, we're only on number four. I got six more to go. All right, number five, object-oriented. So this is more of like a programming metal thing, right? So one of the big criticisms of Drupal from the rest of the programming ecosphere is that it kind of does its own thing in its own way. It doesn't really play by the rules like the rest of other languages, okay? So things like Rails, JavaScript, and JavaScript someone's loosely typed, but JavaScript, 
right? Python, some other cool languages, they're built with this object-oriented kind of methodology. And remember, we talk about object-oriented methodology. It's basically just you kind of give a, an abstracted idea, and you always allow things to extend that idea, right? You build child classes to extend that idea, okay? Now, obviously, PHP 5 has built in really cool things to do that, but it's still not as, it, wasn't, it didn't start that way, I guess the best way to put it. Drupal didn't start that way either, right? We talked about the execution method, core runs, then it runs module invoke all and looks for hooks, then theme runs, then theme runs hooks, and then it comes down or whatever. That kind of horizontal, like, call any file that ha uses this hook is not really object-oriented. It's sort of using that methodology. You can extend things that have been assumed, but it's, you're not extending a class, okay? You're not using the full power of an object-oriented class. Well, Entity Field Clarity is a class. Okay. It uses proper methods and it implements Drupal hooks. Why is that important? One, because it helps us play nice with the rest of the programming ecosystem to show that we actually are trying to use classes, <laughs> right? And we and there's other parts in core that use it too. Two, if you start using it, it starts getting you ready for Drupal 8. Okay? So Drupal 8 is going to be using Symphony, a Symphony Symphony framework. And Symphony framework is all classes. Right? It uses some really cool and complex things in PHP 5.4 that use classes, namespaces, etc. So now, number five is cool because now you can kind of dip your toe into using classes and extending it. And I'll show you some examples of how what that looks like too, without necessarily having to look at something and be like, okay, I have no idea what's going on, right? So that's another reason why to use it. Kind of get you started for what's coming down the pike next year. So let's look at the execute method again, real quick. Okay, this is an example of how object-oriented methods and classes work together with Drupal hooks. Okay, so if you built your query, you added your conditions, then when you actually want to get the results, right, you just at call the execute method on your variable. Well, that actual function calls an alter within itself. Okay, does anyone here not know what Drupal alter is? And that's fine. Everyone clear what Drupal alter is? Sort of? Okay. Yeah, sure. So Drupal Alter is sort of like a hook. Okay? It basically says, hey, I'm about to do a whole bunch of stuff, but before I give it back to the user, does anybody else want to change it? Okay? So when you call something Drupal Alter and you pass in a string and then pass in some values, it looks in other modules for entity underscore query underscore alter. It looks for a function by this name and passes this value into that alter. Okay? If it's been altered, it'll do some stuff with it. So it's still using the cool stuff that alters and hooks does, but it's now wrapped inside of object-oriented fun times. Right? We kind of sort of talked about this again. Why is object-oriented awesome, right? Modular. So now, I don't mean like mod modules within Drupal space. We're talking about modularity, right? You can build kind of specific types of code for different things. There are tons of books out there about different types of patterns, object-oriented patterns to solve different problems. You can utilize that within your extensions of any field query. Because it is object-oriented, it's extendable. So you can create child classes that do specific things. So one of the things that we've done, and I'll show you in energy.gov, let's say Anytime you want to query something, you always want it to be published and you always want it to be descending, right? You could, in theory, extend any field query as a child class and always put those conditions in there, always call those methods. So now, instead of calling entity field query directly when you make your listings, you can call your child class and you know that anytime you're calling your child class to query stuff, it always will be published and descending. Why is that awesome? Because then, if you make a whole bunch of different listings with that same child query and you need to fix it, you only have to fix it in one place and it affects the entire site, right? Versus having disparate queries in random places. And then of course we talked about Symphony too. So number six, kind of talked around it, but let's kind of get right into it. It's extensible, right? You can, you can extend it. Here's an example of what I just talked about, being able to extend Entity Field Query, right? So we know Entity Field Query is awesome. You can call these really cool methods, right? But 
the best programmer is the laziest programmer. Right? I don't have to write the same thing over and over again. Every time I want to do a new query, I want to publish, I want nodes, I want articles, whatever, whatever. Right? I don't have to keep doing that every time I make a listing. So instead, I'm going to create a class that extends entity field query. And because it's object oriented, it automatically just inherits everything entity field query does. Right? And now, when someone calls this class, right, it's going to call the magic constructor method. This is more PHP basic stuff. And in here, I'm going to set some defaults. Right? So anytime I call node entity field query, I just made up a name. Right? It's always going to be a node. It's always going to be published. And it's always going to be in descending order. So now if I make a custom block that has nodes or whatever, if I make you know, a custom page callback or whatever it is, and I use node entity field query instead of entity field query, it'll automatically have those things. And I don't have to keep writing that on those functions that use that. Okay, So that's cool. It's alterable. Of course it is. Everything in Drupal is alterable. Right? Why is that awesome? Because at the end of the day, okay, there are certain things that any field query can't do. I know. Game this presentation is supposed to be awesome, but it does not. Yeah, I know. Pull back. Don't look behind the man behind the curtain. <laughs> but it is alterable. Okay? At the end of the day, all right, one of the cool things that Drupal 7 did was that it allowed different databases behind the scenes to be connected to Drupal. Right? So the default most of the time is MySQL, but you can do Postgres. In theory, you could do Mongo, etc. But the way that it did that was that it took queries and turn them into database objects. So if you had different databases, the only thing the databases had to map to was the objects themselves. Because select star from doesn't work in Mongo, right? That's a different, it's a different syntax. Okay? But if you translate select star from that works in MySQL to a database object, okay? and you write a database object to connect to Mongo, then now you can still use that same type of query with a different type of database. Okay? Why is that awesome? Because now that everything goes to this database object kind of query thing, you can alter that query before it actually gets to that point of executing. Okay? So one of the things that... Um, Entity field query does, and this is again, this is a little bit technical. So entity field query eventually becomes select query. Select query is another class within Drupal core. Anytime you do a query in Drupal and Drupal 7, it uses the select query class. Entity field query is a child of the select query class. Not directly though, but for lack of a better explanation, it pretty much is. Why would you want to alter a query? Because as you know, when you call entity field query, you're joining tables. Okay? And as you join tables, you're essentially increasing your filter. Right? If you wanted more, if you wanted a, a wider net of nodes or articles, then you would use less methods on your query because the more methods you add, right, the smaller subset of results you're going to get. That is because every time you add a method, especially from field, it's doing an inner join. Okay? All my database people who know there's been inner join, and outer join, left join, right join, inner joins basically just mean if it's not on that table, I'm, it, it, it's not going to work. Okay? Well, sometimes you want to do a query where you want those values on that table, but you want values that may not necessarily be on that table too. Or you want to do a comparison against a table so you want to compare the stuff that has values inside of it, but you also want to get stuff that doesn't have a value at all. And I'll get to an example that explains it a little bit better. Okay? But altering is cool for that one reason. All right. So how do you alter a query? One cool way is tagging a query. Tagging a query is all that's doing, you're just adding metadata to a query object. Okay? Just like you could call field condition or entity property order by, you can call add tag, throw in a string, and now you've got a metadata on that query. Once you add that metadata, okay, you can 
use this hook, hook query tag alter, to actually alter what that query does before it actually executes. Okay? So this link right here is a blog post that I wrote on how to actually use OR conditions with entity field query. Okay? So again, remember, any field query always interjoins tables. Okay? So what's a good example? Let's say, right, built this awesome Drupal platform site. Your client loves it, right? Articles have four or five different fields, they're using them, it's awesome, or whatever it is. Okay? But now they say, well, we want this, we want this field where we want to be able to say if this value, we'll call it archiving. So we add an archive field, okay, to the article content type. Everyone right, follow me so far? So we got an archive field. And what this field is supposed to do is that if we tag it and say yes, archive it, okay, it should not show up in the listings that you built for us. Okay? So you built these pages and you've had all these articles and there's hundreds of articles in the Drupal database, right? And if they go to this page, you put it in any field query and it shows a listing of articles in a certain date range. And if you build, go to this page, it has this block that shows articles that are filtered by a particular author, right? But now they want this archive functionality where they say, if we add and say yes for this field, that article should not show up on those pages or blocks. So you think, okay, if I add that field, what's going to happen? Does Drupal go back through all the existing content and pre-fill all the old content with no values? When you add a new field to an existing content type where content is already in the database? No, right? It just adds the table and it's blank. It's only going to add data to that table as new content is added with a value there or someone goes back to the old content and updates that value. Right? So think about that. You got hundreds of articles, you're making a listing, you're descending, whatever, but now you need to exclude articles that have that value set as yes, and, right, you need to get articles that don't have a value at all. And if you use an inner join, it's only going to get articles that have a value on that table. Right? That's what an inner join does. If you enter join a blank table, you're not going to get anything back. Okay? So how do you use entity field query to do this or condition? Grab articles that have archive set to no or no value for archive. Right? This is what this does. If you tag your query, you can alter it at a different spot. So what this is saying is, okay, at the hook query tag alter, instead of inner joining the table, I'd left join the table, right? I can left join on that field, and let's say it's a taxonomy term or whatever it is. Then I can call this db or function and use that or condition that I'm talking about. So the fact that any field query is alterable allows you to do the cool stuff that's in select query class and alter it and do some cool things that are there, but still have the simple and cool stuff that any field query gives you. All because it's object oriented. Right? Okay. Exception handling. Why is this awesome? Who likes white screens of death? All right. Clients love that, right? You wrote something, and it was awesome, and then you broke it. And now what? I go to this page, and I get a white screen of death. What's going on? I don't understand. Right? So PHP, as a language in general, provides a way to provide exceptions. Okay? So they try certain things, and then if you try it, it doesn't work. It'll throw an exception to the screen. So sometimes if you break something, it'll say, you know, PDO exception or such and such exception. And a lot of times, as a developer, that helps you troubleshoot what the issue is. When you use any field query instead of like straight query strings, any field query uses exceptions. So if there's something wrong with your query, you won't get the white screen of death. You'll get a nice bright red error message so you can help go ahead and fix it. So it saves you that extra step of jumping into the error log or whatever you're using to kind of figure out what's going on, your debugger, etc. 
View modes. Who's heard of view modes? View modes are awesome, right? View modes are like ridiculous in Drupal 7, right? So the last two points are more of what can you do with any field query, or what can you do with the results that come back from any field query? And so the first one is view modes, OK? For those who are not, don't know the awesome power of view modes, which is like a whole separate session, I recommend Googling view modes and looking up uh, my colleague Tim Cosgrove's view modes uh, presentation from DrupalCon Denver. It's pretty cool. But essentially, a view mode is I'm going to use his analogy. It's like looking through a prism. Okay? If you turn the prism a certain way, you'll see something different. If you turn the prism another way, you'll see something different. You're still looking at the exact same thing, but the perspective of how you're viewing it right, changes depending upon how you change that prism. View mode is the exact same thing. Okay? When you're looking at a node straight on, that's the full view mode. right? It shows all the fields. Everything prints out. When you're looking at a node, when it's being listed, you may show a teaser view mode, right? You just show the title with a quick little blurb. If you're looking at a node in, I don't know, related nodes or recommended nodes or recommended articles block, maybe you want a thumbnail there. That's a different view mode. You could create a new view mode for that. How does that relate to entity field query? Well, because any field query, when you query for nodes, it just gives you all the NIDs. Right? So when you do your query, your field conditions, your property conditions, and you click and you run execute, it gives you the NIDs there, all the results in NIDs. And by NIDs, I mean nodes, so node ID numbers. Right? If you're using users or taxonomy terms, it'll give you the taxonomy term or the user ID, et cetera. It gives you the ID number for the entity that's specific to what you're running. Okay? Why is that cool? Because now you can display that listing Okay, without having to do a for each. You don't have to do for each node load, pull it out, call a theme function, et cetera, et cetera. You can do these three lines. Grab the NIDs, which happen to be the array keys for that result set. Call node load multiple. Who's used node load multiple? Cool. Node load multiple is awesome. It's like node load, but multiple. <laughs> Right? You can throw an array of NIDs and it'll load all the nodes for you. You don't have to worry about performance and stuff. A lot of caching, a lot of thought went into node load multiple. As a matter of fact, if you look at the code for node load, it actually calls node load multiple and just throws in the one array of the NID you're calling in there. Okay? So now you get these full, robust node objects. Right? Well, if you're running a custom block, that wants to show those nodes with that little thumbnail and just the title and the teaser, and you've defined that view mode right, with just those few fields, you can call that view mode directly as a string in node view multiple. So you've basically given them a listing, a custom block with listings, that they can change what fields show up where, right? Because that view mode is in that manage display link on the content type screen. You know what I'm talking about? Go to con structure, content types, shows you all the content types, got the edit link there. Manage fields link, then manage display. If you ever click manage display, the first one that comes up is the full, right? It shows all the fields. If you change to a different view mode, you can pick which fields show up there. So now you're telling your client, cool, you don't want the thumbnail to be there, then just go there and take it out. I don't have to change any code. Good for you, right? They don't have to bother you with that. I want the thumbnail to be 100 by 100 instead of 50 by 50. Cool. Go into Manage Display and change the thumbnail. Change it to a different size. Good for you. I'm going to do something else that's more important. Right? Using view modes is awesome. And any field query kind of gives you that tool to get your content so you can just throw it into these cool functions. Again, the view modes presentation, here's the link. If you guys want it. I try to make my links like easily copyable. So, Beans. Who's heard of beans? Oh, man. I thought like a whole bunch of hands would shut up, shoot up. So beans. Who knows what beans stand for? It's an acronym. Beans stands for block entities ain't nodes. <laughs> My 
dear and close friend, Neil Hastings, who wrote this module, is a character. But essentially, what this module does, it makes blocks entities. You should all be like, ooh, blocks, right? Blocks are everywhere. Blocks are cool. Now blocks have fields. Instead of that crazy block admin screen where you click configure and it doesn't tell you anything, right? Now you can have different types of blocks with different types of fields. It's almost like having a content type, but they're blocks. Think about that. That's pretty cool, right? So now you can do indie affiliate query with blocks as well. All right, so here's some links to look at how that fits together. Right? We're using that pretty extensively in energy.gov, the beans module. One of the cool things that's coming down the road, which I'm not even supposed to show if I'm supposed to tell you or not, but I don't really care, is there's a big effort, excuse me, to make blocks revisionable. Okay? And that's awesome because now you can give clients a preview of what their site would look like based on certain conditions. So if you say this node at this time looks like this, and you, you're, you're storing that information in a node revision, and you say this is what this block will look like at this particular time, and you're storing that information in a block revision, you can essentially change the entire site to say on August 1st, or in this case November 3rd, depending upon who wins, these are all the blocks and what they should look like and what the listings should look like, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Revisions and workflows, state machine after this, Right? Provides that functionality where you can now do site previews. That's pretty cool. Right? You can literally build a site that would look completely different months in advance, right? Give that power to your client. And now, if they do like a news site or they have something that depends upon a real life occurrence, they can build it out, go through workflow go through all the bureaucracy that they want, right? Go in their different scenarios, and then it automatically fires whenever that condition has been met. Pretty cool. So here's an example of how you would use EFQ in Beans, okay? So again, Beans, block entities, they have fields, it's awesome, okay? One of the ways we use Beans is we use the fields to filter, to pass as a filter to our entity field queries, right? So instead of a client having to go in and say, you know, I want articles by this author and then having to go in and add the articles individually, right, like a node reference field or something like that, right? They want to just automatically show up. So if an author adds a new article, it should just show up, but it should filter by that article. Well, on the bean creation screen, they get a field to pick a list of authors. Then when they click save, right, there's a view method on the bean that dictates what that bean does, right? So in this example, it's saying do an EFQ, so grab some nodes, right? And the filter that we're going to pass to EFQ is the value that that user filled out on the bean form. So now the client can build blocks that are reactive and responsive. They can make blocks be they can fill they can make blocks have automatic filters and stuff like that, right? So you don't have to you don't they don't have to go in and manually add stuff. And you don't have to build a custom block and maintain the custom block to get a listing of things. Right? You can make a bean that has a field that you can use as a filter. Then when you show the nodes using view modes, you can pass that filter to EFQ. And that's what this is showing. Right? Pretty cool. Here's some, there's kind of a synopsis of all the links we've kind of talked about. Right? So if you guys want to follow up if you're more of a reader than a listener, that's cool. I'm kind of a reader myself. Here's some links for you. If you can, so if you go to the link, 
and a modal pops up and says, we are no longer Treehouse Agency, we are phase two, just go ahead and click continue Treehouse Agency. I meant to tell you that. So yes, we are merged. I'm not going to use the A word. We weren't, we weren't acquired. We were merged with phase two. Um, and so our livery on our website shows the phase two stuff, but our, all, most of our content's there. So a lot of the documentation that I'm referencing, well, I wrote on the phase two blocks. So I mean the treehouse blocks. So that's why it's pointing to those. Any questions? Look at that. I finished almost on time. Thank you for staying awake. I appreciate it. That's it. The end.